Hello students, we are now in lesson 15 of Living Online. In this lesson, you will learn about various digital communication technologies. Upon completion of this lesson, you should be able to learn more about digital communication technologies, difference between real-time and delayed communications, best communication tool for given situation, and streaming. The internet and widely available high-speed broadband connections have made communicating with others quick, efficient, and affordable, as the traditional boundaries between the telephone network, cellular networks, and data networks are disappearing. We find that we have a wide variety of choices regarding the technologies and the devices we want to use in order to communicate. Digital communication is a communication that involves using an electronic method such as email, instant or text messaging, or electronic voice and video conferencing. It includes delayed and real-time communication. There are two essential time frames for communications, delayed and real-time. In delayed communication, there is a time delay between sending and receiving of information. A mailed letter is an example of delayed communication. In digital communications, delayed exchanges are referred to as asynchronous. In real-time communication, information is sent and received instantly. A face-to-face -face conversation is an example of real-time communication. In digital communications, real-time exchanges are referred to as synchronous. The digital tools we will discuss that provide asynchronous communications are email and text messaging. These tools are considered asynchronous because a delay is acceptable. That is, you can send a communication to your intended recipient regardless of your recipient's availability. In email, you may spend your work day sitting at your desk, sending and replying to email messages. You may also respond to messages as soon as they arrive, or you may also respond in the later time. SMS text messages are short messages, around 160 characters, sent over a cellular provider's network using the short message service protocol. Text messaging is also considered a delayed communication. When receiving a text message, you have an option to read it immediately or open it later. It is not always easy to determine when or when not to use text messaging. Here are a few guidelines. Use text if you must communicate, but are in a place or situation where speaking out loud would be inconsiderate or indiscreet. Avoid texting while driving. Avoid sending and responding to texts if you are in a social setting. Avoid sending text messages late at night. And do not attempt to send text messages while you are in an airplane, that is, taxiing, taking off, or landing. While asynchronous communication methods such as text and email provide you with a history of communication and proof that certain communications were sent and received, sometimes there is just no substitute for real-time communications. Remember that real-time communication is a live conversation. When you are engaged in a face-to-face -face conversation with another person, it is easy to observe body language, facial expressions, and tone of voice. Each person can ask and answer questions as they arise. You can also see whether they agree with you or not and adjust your communications as necessary to meet a need or bring the other person to your point of view. 
the technologies that provide real-time or asynchronous communications include phone calls, conference calls, online meeting, video conferences such as WebEx, and instant messaging. Phone calls are personal and give each participant the other's full attention. Phone calls can be almost as effective as face-to-face -face communications. There are many situations in business and personal relations that require real-time personal contact. Consider the following scenarios in which a phone call is probably the best means of communications to use when a face-to-face -face meeting is not possible. You are communicating with someone whom you do not know. You must convey a complicated idea. You must discuss a sensitive topic. You require an immediate response. And you need to get a message to someone immediately. Voice over internet protocol is a technology that allows you to make voice calls using a broadband internet connection instead of a traditional telephone line. VOIP phone calls use the internet to transfer voice packets between the phones used in a call or conference call. Many businesses use VOIP services because they are much less expensive than traditional telephone line services, especially for long-distance calling. Some examples are WeChat and Viber. A conference call is a call that involves three or more parties. Many business phones include a conference button, and most consumer phones include a flash button, which you can use to create a conference call if a conference calling service is included in your plan. You can also participate in conference calls on landline, mobile, and VOIP phones. WebEx is a hosted service that you can use to conduct online meetings with anyone who has an internet connection, including mobile users. An online meeting sometimes called a web conference is a meeting in which multiple participants can speak to each other and also share visuals such as presentation files, documents, whiteboards, and even video. Within a meeting, different participants can take control and share files or progress through a presentation. WebEx services are provided by Cisco through various subscription or pay-per-use plans. These are other online conference apps, Skype, Google Hangouts, Zoom, and Microsoft Teams. Because online conferencing uses the internet to transfer voice and video signals, and because the internet is a data network, online conferencing is well suited for exchanging digital files, sending instant messages, and sharing screens. For example, in an online conference call, you can pull up a YouTube video and play it in your browser and share your screen and your audio with everyone else on the call. You can even send the URL to everyone in an instant message while the video is playing. Just about anything you can do on your computer or on, on the internet on your own, you can do it with others through online conferencing. Streaming is included in this lesson about digital communication because businesses and individuals can create video or audio recordings of presentations, marketing pieces, product demonstrations, and so on, and make these recordings available as streaming media. Streaming delivers content to your device in a steady, consistent flow of data. When you stream media files from a website, a media server streams the content to you in a client media player application. If multiple people want to stream the same content, the media server sends a stream to each client. 
Live streaming is the process of broadcasting real-time live audio video footage as a video feed to an audience that accesses the stream over the internet. That's the end of lesson 15. I hope you have learned something new. Until next time!